Welcome back. Moving on where we left off. I would like to set up a few attributes we will need to render those particles. This will be a lot of vex, so be prepared. Let's lay down a point wrangle. We will start setting it up using the ground particles. Um, and another thing I will change is I will go into the display options. and I will switch the display particle type from points to disk. So we can preview our P scale in the viewport and also our alpha attribute. To begin with, I would like to set up a few variables that we will be needing again and again in this code. The first one being a random seed based on the particles ID. Also, I added a channel float for the seed. So if we press this button, we will get a slider so we can adjust our seed at any time. And the second variable I would like to set up is the normalized age. So every particle will have an attribute based on age between zero and one. For starters, I would like to create the p-scale attribute. And what I'm going to do is I will feed it into a ramp so we can adjust the probability and then fit it between a user specified range. Let's create the spare input parameters. For instance, we can set the range to 0 0.3 to 1, and we can change the probability so that there are a lot of less big particles being created and the majority of particles being more in the range towards 0 0.3. We can also change the interpolation to monotone cubic. As you can see, they are still quite big. So let's scale them down by a constant factor. And what I also want to do is I want to have a global multiplier for p-scale. Next, I would like to add color to these particles based on the normalized age variable we declared up here. And we need to explicitly cast this into a vector. Now we can do something like from a light blue to a not so light blue, something like this, maybe. Next, I will create the alpha attribute, so the opacity, and I will also drive it with the normalized age, just like we did with the color. And I just realized I forgot one thing. We would also like to change the p-scale based on the normalized age as well. take a short amount of time and reorganize this interface. Next up, we are going to create a density attribute for each particle. So each particle will know how dense the point load is around. And we can use this information to further enhance our attributes and we can create something like clusters of points and the centers of those clusters being brighter than the points around, etc. Okay, in order for this to work, we will do a point load lookup using the pcfind function. So we will create two variables first, the radius and the max points to look for. After that, we can create an integer array where all the point numbers being found from the point load lookup will be stored. To get a density value between zero and one, we will divide the length of this points array by the max points that the PC find is going to be allowed to look for. And we will explicitly cast those two variables to float. Let's create the spare input parameters. Let's say 25 points and a radius of 0.1. I would like to get full control over the new density attribute. So we will create a fit function and expose all the parameters to the user. And as there are no perfect linear things in nature, I would also like to raise it to the power of 1.5. Let's create the spare input parameters for this as well. To see an effect, we will multiply p scale and alpha by this new density attribute.
If you lower the radius and increase the max points, we can already see an effect. For instance, this cluster here is a little bit brighter than, let's say, this area, or this. And this area here is a little bit brighter than this area, because there is a higher density of points. To grant the user more flexibility, I would like to make this whole block optionally, so you can turn it off if you don't need it. Next up, I would like to provide an option to create extra bright spots in those high density areas. I will be creating two variables, one density threshold and one particle probability. Those two variables will act as a threshold to only allow a few particles to become those bright centers in the middle of those clusters. If the density of a particle is greater than the density threshold and the random number generated of the ID is greater than the particle probability, then they're going to act as a bright center of those clusters, which means we will multiply P scale and alpha and color to make them bigger, brighter, better, whatever. But before we're going to do this, I just realized I made another mistake. Sorry. We have to change this here to rent based off our seed plus some random number. And then we need to readjust our point cloud lookup values later. I will also raise this to the power of two to make it exponential. Sorry, to the power of 1.5. Two would be a little bit too harsh, I think. And if we create our spare parameters, we can raise the density threshold and the p-scale probability, and then we can multiply it from one to three, maybe to 10 to really see the effect. And now you can see we really get those bright spots in the dense areas. We want to do the same thing with alpha, so we can just copy this one change the seed and we will copy it again and use it to boost our color diffuse attribute change the seed again create the spare parameters and now it really comes down to playing with the radius and the max points perfectly create those big cluster and nebula like arrangement of bright spots And just like we did with density, I would also like to make this cluster center bright spot thingy creation optional to the user. Now this can be toggled as well. As a last step, I would like to vomit this, right? And I would like to create some overall multipliers for, for alpha and color and velocity as well. And set it all to one to begin with. Hmm. Let's move them on top. I think it's better UX wise. What I would highly suggest you to do is to save this as a preset. You can click on this gear icon and choose save preset, and then you can give it a name and save preset. That really was uh, the heart of this lesson. And now we will apply it to the different particle groups we have. So I'm going to rename this point wrangle to yes. Yes. And I will specify the group up here to the leader group. So now just the leader particles will be treated with this code here and we can start to adjust it. I would like to make the p-scale difference smaller, like, like so. And I will reduce these bright center spot parts here as well. 
something like this. Then I will tweak some of those settings here. Yeah, maybe something like this. Then we can duplicate this wrangle, alt drag, rename it to group trail, change the group as well. I'm going to increase the difference between the min and max p scale, this one. And I will make them smaller in general. Something like this. Now we can clean up all the attributes we don't need and send it to our render node. We can delete everything besides velocity, alpha, color, and p scale. And we can also get rid of the groups. Goodbye. We can create a null, call it out ground particles, hit control C, go up one level, go into the ren ground particles node, create an object merge. On this object merge, change the transform to into this object just to be safe and paste our path into the object one slot. Let's do the same procedure with our vertical particles as well. So we can drag this over and we can start working on it. I will hide the other objects. I think we can make them a little bit bigger in general. Maybe also bury the min p scale. Allow a certain amount of particles to be big. And I will also reduce this max particle and play around with those settings. What we should also do, just in case, I don't think it's really necessary, but it leaves me with a better feeling, is to change the seed in each of those quadrangles. Okay, just like we did before, let's rename this to vertical leaders. Second one is going to be vertical trail. Change the point group accordingly. Okay, so And duplicate it one more time because we also have the falling particles. And for those, I would like to change the color as well and introduce some orangey tones to have a bit of complement. something like this. So let's do the particle cleanup and all that stuff. Okay, in the next one we're going to set up some shaders and render the scene.